The first Terminator is a great techno-fear pseudo-slasher movie. The second Terminator is a great action movie, one of the best in my opinion. The third Terminator kind of suffered because of the fact that it never really should have been made and the only reason it was was when Linda Hamilton and James Cameron got divorced, James Cameron gave the rights to ter the Terminator franchise to Linda Hamilton and she sold them and those guys who she sold them to made another movie. It's a really mediocre movie, but not embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Before we enter the post-apocalypse, which is populated with machines and poorly drawn caricatures who might as well be machines because they're not human, we meet Marcus Wright, played by Sam Worthington. He's on death row because he killed his brother and two cops. A woman from Cyberdyne, who has terminal cancer, tells him to sign a paper so that they can do an experiment with his body after he's dead. He says he'll sign it, but only if she kisses him. She does, and he signs it. After he's executed, we cut to the future, which is 2018. So, why did he want her to kiss him? How did these two know each other? What happened with his brother and those two cops? These questions are all going to get answered later in the movie, right? Wrong. Yes, unfortunately, this is the last time we ever see the Cancer Woman's actual character. And although Sam Worthington is in the entire rest of the movie, the fact that he killed his brother and two cops remains the first and last thing we learn about him. So the main plot, and I use that term loosely, is that Kyle Reese has been kidnapped by the machines, and Sam Worthington and John Connor need to save him, or John Connor can never be, because Kyle Reese is his father. And that's it. No interesting characters. No commentary on the human condition. That... Think about that. That is the most thin plot you could ever make for this movie, almost. And even that incredibly thin plot doesn't make any sense. Because the only reason John Connor would go into Skynet is so that he could get Kyle Reese out. But if the machines already have Kyle Reese, they don't need to use him to lure John Connor in, because if they kill Kyle Reese, Kyle Reese will never go back in time and impregnate Sarah Connor, and John Connor will never be. So what's the point? What was cool about the other Terminator movies was that they were about people. They were stories about how people reacted to things. And what was really cool was the Terminators in the movies, as, the, as they were around people more, would develop human uh, tendencies. For instance, when, how Arnold smiles and, and makes jokes like hasta la vista, and how um, the T-1000 um, instead of just killing Sarah Connor and calling for John himself with like the voice synthesizer he like sticks his finger in her and gets her to call for Sarah Connor because he's gotten the malicious side of the human nature. That's what elevates these movies above the regular action fair. These, these human moments. But in this movie there's no human moments. It's just explosions and killing people and it's not, it's really not very interesting. Well, it's not really killing people because there's no people in this movie. And that's why there's no human moments, but just thought I'd put that in there. And not as the story only stupid, but it's also incredibly, incredibly predictable. I mean, if you have seen the first three Terminator movies, and you don't guess every single plot twist in this movie, well, wow, good for you. It's like, whoa, look at this Sam Worthington character. He can beat up all these guys and jump off all this shit and drive the car really fast. It, it's, it's amazing. It, he's such a beast. It's, it's like he's some sort of machine. Now I'm still on the writing because that's still the biggest problem in this movie. They, they it's so annoying because they pepper in so many throwbacks to moments and lines from the old films. Now all this does is take is serve to take you out of the movie. Like if you have John Connor play, you could be mine. It makes me go, oh yeah, I remember in uh, Terminator Two when John Connor's friend with the mullet was playing. You could be mine. That was a good movie. Oh wait, I'm not even paying attention to this stupid ass movie right now. It's annoying. And they've always done this in the other films, but there it fit, because all the previous movies had splashes of comedy, where the machines would like try to be human, or they'd repeat a line from the previous film, but it always worked in those, because the other movies were at least a little more lighthearted, and it always and it also helped that it was Arnold Schwarzenegger re-delivering those lines. I mean, and this movie does it should not be comedic, and is not, let me tell you. Because look at the color palette. The, the brightest thing in this entire color palette for the first half of the movie is Moon Bloodgood's teeth. If you're a Terminator fan, don't see this movie. You'll just hurt yourself. 
It's like the Star Wars prequels. It's really that bad. And did I did I mention the writing? I mean, I'm sorry that I keep getting back to this, but there's something to be said for a movie that has a line of dialogue like, he is the key to the future to the past. Jesus Christ. 